All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, you guys are attached to my chest because what we're gonna be doing here is taking some fig trees and putting them into larger containers. And I've already done one here really quickly just to give you a rundown. Is these are a number of them that I had. Actually, these up over here we did yesterday or the day before. And then this one we just did on camera, although I had to restart the camera. But very quickly, we're just gonna put this tree into a larger pot. We're gonna give it some Osmocote or Florican, these beads here that are slow release fertilizer, just a little bit of nutrients. And then I come in here and give it some compost tea. This is uh, compost tea that I've been brewing now for two days. You can see it over here, it's kind of going and, you know, it, it's not a finished pro, pro um, process i think we need to get a little bit better at this i need a better pump this pump i thought was going to do a lot more than it did and obviously it's not so i ordered the super duper heavy duty one which should be here tomorrow uh, but so far from what i can tell it's not going anaerobic it looks really healthy actually i don't know how strong and how good this compost tea is going to end up being in terms of this batch but i can guarantee you that it's certainly helping with all the additional microbes now there's a whole lot to that and we should probably do a whole separate video on that but for right now i'm not going to worry about it uh but anyway we're going to take you guys through in this video the different varieties here that i'm up potting just to show you kind of in a way how much work this this is how much work is involved i like using this gopro i haven't really had enough time to go around the yard as I was working really hard this year to film with this GoPro. Cause that was the whole purpose of it was to get this GoPro and show you guys all the different things that I'm doing, whether that's grafting, you can kind of see my hands right in front of me, all the grafting that I did, maybe even setting up the garden, planting the garden, planting seeds, transplanting and transplants, you know, all the things, but I, maybe even constructing this arbor that I just put in. But the problem is I had so many things to do. And when I work, I like to work quick. I don't like to mess around. And it's really difficult to stop and start. And I don't know, I probably, I think I regret it a little bit, but going forward, that's kind of what we're gonna do now. Um, I hope to uh, definitely film a lot more in terms of showing you guys hands-on and a lot of the work that's involved. So very simply just up potting here, guys, is just we turn the pot upside down and slip the pot off. You don't want to pull up here on top of the, the plant. Um, that'll damage the roots potentially if it's not really, really well rooted. The most important thing about up potting is avoiding transplant shock. So if we can avoid transplant shock, that's absolutely key. The next important thing is using the right soil. And uh, I'm using here a new soil that I don't think I've talked to you guys about just yet. Honestly, I don't have too many good or negative things to say about it just yet. But so far I've been trying different soils. The um, Master Nursery, which is from the same company that creates this other one here, I believe. Uh, this is the lobster compost from coast of Maine. This stuff's really expensive. It is organic. It does do a great job, but I find that uh, it's really heavy. And so for a, you know, a container tree or a container plant, we don't really want a very heavy soil. This, that would be great for a garden. Spreading that out probably gives you the best garden soil you could ask for other than just making your own compost. Uh, there's some really good stuff in that, but um, this other stuff here is from Master Nursery, or at least it's the same company, I believe, Coast of Maine. It is organic as well. It's really important to me now. It has uh, ectonendo mycorrhizae, but probably not a ton of it, but let's be honest. But there is a whole different amount of things in here, they say. But a lot of this really is sphagnum peat moss bark. Um, you know, and that's that's mostly it. Let's be honest. All this other crap, uh, it's it's just peat moss, really. <laughs> it's peat moss and bark. 
and it has a nice texture to it but what i find with at least the just natural potting soil or the soil conditioner that i was using is that it was really great stuff but it wasn't listed as omri as organic number one and to me i would like to really avoid glyphosate whenever possible and then two it wasn't always broken down enough and it was a compost uh, it was not a sphagnum peat moss like this which is already a broken down material and so a lot of the trees actually these younger trees that i would then up pot with that just natural potting soil uh, they would struggle because they were then competing for nitrogen when you have those unbroken down pieces in there in the just natural soil conditioner and uh so it's a shame in that sense because it's just not a finished enough product and therefore the plants kind of they don't get as established quickly as they should and uh for me that's that's a big deal now so yeah where's the tag here here we go this variety is called by the way paradiso bronze from vs and again i'm just going to put all the completed trees over here once i've got them in their place and by the way it's a good idea to kind of just tap these down because that will get a lot of the air pockets out and tamp down the soil and once i get them all in their containers i'll feed them as i said i'm going to feed them then i'm going to give them the compost tea we're going to use this this fork in here and then uh we're going to water them all in with with the hose really well it is going to rain a lot tonight but still want to water them in these these plants look a bit sad and then maybe actually because they just came in the mail i should put them in the shade uh, but i'll keep an eye on them throughout the day and see what the deal is here in the remaining hours of the day um, all right the other thing i want to mention the other varieties we have here this one's called uh, gross grease de lipari it's a french fig that i grew in the past and uh, it recently died. I had it as a rootstock because I didn't want to throw it out. I'd rather just keep it as a rootstock. But the tree, um, in actuality, it doesn't really do that well in a container um, here. So that's why I've used it as rootstock. It's a very tasty fig. But the problem with it, again, is that it just doesn't do well. It splits too often. And uh, by planting this in the ground is actually my plan. I'm gonna put this one in the ground. I totally forgot about that. But when I plant this in the ground, I will, of course, it will get, a, it will get more established, more energy, and the shape of the, the figs will actually change to a more elongated shape. And the splitting will happen a lot less. And uh, for me, that's the only real way I can actually grow this fig. Otherwise, it's a total waste of my time but I figured I would try it out uh, to see if in the ground it would actually succeed. Here we have another one here. This is new, it's called Bacchio. This is a fig that is very interesting to me, believe it or not. And um, the leaves actually are single lobe. That's very interesting, heart-shaped leaves, because the, fig them the figs themselves really do remind me of Celeste. And they have a really good shape. I'm sure they can split, but for the most part, this is a fig that is not talked about. I think it's very underrated and should do very well here in this um, in this climate, in a humid place. The other fig here is Ponte Tresa. I just want to quickly go over this because Ponte Tresa, I already am growing this. Well, Ross, why did you buy another Ponte Tresa? And some people think, well, Ross, you know, you could just copy another tree well you know bill is selling these trees for very cheap prices i think the prices of figs are coming way down actually i think the first ponte trace i ever bought was from fruit nut on uh fig bid and that's the tree right here very sad looking tree now isn't it it's not his fault but this one i think i actually originally got it for 22 dollars put that into a 10 gallon size pot and then i put that in the ground and it just has not done well since I planted it in the ground. It's actually gone backwards in a way in health. 
So we're really, really trying this year to establish this plant. And the reason why it's kind of going backwards is because this area here is not very good for the figs. I planted them incorrectly. It's a bit shady here. And this is all peat moss that the, the trees are planted in. So this peat moss gets dry throughout the summer. And these trees have been kind of living in a bone dry situation for a while of me not watering them as much as they should. Once the peat moss gets dry, it's hydrophobic. That's the one thing I really hate about peat moss. And I don't like using peat moss for that reason. But now that we have, I've kind of figured this out and realized that in actuality, the trees really were not planted all that well either. And that I really needed to get deep down so that the trees make contact with the native soil, plant them down there back, uh, as far as they can go and then cover them with peat moss. And as I cover them with the peat moss, I need to pack this down really, really hard. Uh, that's the only real way that you can plant a tree like this in peat moss. You know, with clay, when you plant a tree in clay, you could very easily just, you know, dig a hole, slip it in there and cover it right up. <laughs> you don't have to really worry about it. Uh, in other materials and maybe even loams and uh, sand and, and you know, uh, this peat moss, it's a totally different story. So it's a bit of a shame in a sense, just having to change up my style of planting because it's been really not something that's been necessary to go to such great lengths to plant a tree here with the clay soil that I have. But since, again, you know, I've learned my lesson. I had to come in there this year and I tamped down the soil really, really well around the, the roots of these trees, around the root balls. So again, I'll show it to you kind of, it's the same principle with this up potting here. Is when I put this in the container, you really want to press down around the root ball. So by pressing down like that, that's getting really good contact here with the roots. Then I'm gonna come in here and fill this in. We're gonna give it a little bit of a tug, a tamp, whatever you wanna call it. This will remove a lot of the air pockets. We put the tag in, maybe throw a little bit more here on top. And then we put it over here. Now, why did I choose Ponte, another Ponte Tresa? The other one's not doing well. It needs to get established. It will get established by the end of this year. And of course I could have, could have air layered it at some point during the season, as I really do expect these trees to turn around quite nicely. Now, where I could have rooted them, could have rooted some cuttings which is very likely going to be the case this, this season. But that would have wait, it took me a whole year. And I think a year's time for me is worth it. Getting to then evaluate Ponte Tresa a bit more, I do believe it's going to be one of the better figs that you can have and grow in a colder place, or in a humid place, excuse me. The shape is oval and it should not and does not split nearly as often as you might imagine especially when planted in the ground these container trees are certainly inferior in terms of the split resistance as far as that is concerned because the shape dramatically changes when you plant these trees in the ground the shape of the fruits is much more conducive for that splitting. So that's the four trees here that I wanted to do for you guys in terms of up-potting. That's kind of the thought process. Let me water these in, feed them as well. A little bit of Osmocote. There we go. Here's the compost tea. Give them a shot of this. 
really don't even know how much to give them of this, but there is an endless supply of it, so I'm not like I'm stingy or anything, but I wonder if, I'm sure there is such a thing as too much. But for now, that's what I'm gonna do. And then of course, we gotta turn on the irrigation really quickly. Water these guys in with the hose. Here's my irrigation. Very simply, I put manual at the second station for five minutes. This will kick on. This is the second station right here. It's on. Just heard it click. And then I have to come back over here actually. And this connector, I need to switch this over. Weird setup. Probably a better setup, but it is what it is. That is hot water. And that's good. Hot water is good because we want the soil temperatures to be warm. I water these trees in really, really well. The nice thing about these um, fabric pots is you could see the water hit the sides and kind of drench down and it kind of gives you a good idea of when the water is really throughout the entire pot you guys can even see what I'm doing right now you know I've read that actually the water in here of course it's chlorinated, it has chloramines in it. And believe it or not, the uh, chlorine in the water is gonna kill the microbes in the soil. So, I mean, not all of them obviously, but it does kill them. And the unfortunate reality is I'm giving them these microbes and now I'm killing them in a way with uh, the water I just gave them, but who knows? We'll see. See what the uh, changes are here. I'm sure it'll be a positive. Anyway, this was this little video here, guys, of up potting the figs. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We actually have one more tree over here to plant. As I mentioned, what is this one again? The gross monstrous. Thank you guys for watching this one. We'll see you soon. Catch you guys for the next video and hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog figboss.com. Take care, everybody.